What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp modeling for rendering tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to continue our gallery. We're going to start adding things like stuff in the background and furniture and models in order to really kind of detail this space out. I will link to the rest of this playlist in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this tutorial, it gets a little weird at this point because I'm planning on doing tutorials for multiple different renders programs on what we can create with this and each one of these I would approach this a little bit differently so because we're kind of at the point now where we've got our space roughed out we may need to add a little a few more like ceiling textures or something like that the space is generally roughed out but now the next part we're going to approach rendering this space differently um, with different programs so like for example um, if I was to send this into Lumion I wouldn't really want anything in the background here um, because I would do all of that using Lumion's exterior modeling tools so things like uh, working on the landscape and that kind of thing where with Inscape uh, maybe I would use Inscape proxies for all the different trees and things like that so probably what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start going and I will probably group things that I can turn on and off um, so that uh, I won't necessarily need them for each program but let's go ahead and start off as if we were going to render this in Inscape. And so the first thing I would do if I was going to render this in Inscape is I would draw out the rug over here and give it a little bit of thickness. So not a lot, just a little bit. And so I would just draw a rectangle here and I'd probably extrude this up like maybe half an inch or something like that. Just enough to give it some thickness and then I would uh, make it a group and I would apply whatever material I want on here for this rug. So, and uh, one of the cool features that we're going to be able to use with Inscape on this one is the ability to use the Inscape grass in order to give this rug a little more like rug-ishness. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But for what I'm going to do right what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go into the carpet materials and I'm just going to select one of these. And so in this case, we'll just pick something like this diamond olive carpet. So it's just kind of a rug that's going to sit in here. And we're going to use Inscape's rug tools or um, Inscape's grass tools in order to give this a little bit of make this look a little bit more like carpet. So the other thing I'm going to do, again, if I was modeling for Inscape, is I would use Inscape's uh, asset library as much as I could in order to fill this out. And so, like for example, in order to do that in Inscape, I would just uh, open up the toolbar and I would just go into asset library. So when you click on asset library, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up the library of assets that Inscape has um, for you to use. And so this library, I would say, is kind of in its infancy, so it doesn't have a ton of different things in it. But the nice thing about these things is when you bring them in to Inscape, they render really well. And so I'm just going to detail out this space um, using a few of these different assets. So like, for example, in this space, you might have um, like a few different armchairs. So this is probably in a college space like this one. This is probably going to be something where they've just got some comfy seating sitting out here. Maybe a table if I can find one in Inscape's library. If not, you can definitely download those from the 3D warehouse. Um, but I'm trying to use kind of the assets that come with the various programs. And so the nice thing about these is they don't have like high resolution textures or anything. But then when you actually render them in Inscape, you can see how they come in as really detailed, good looking models and so we could go ahead and and the other nice thing about Inscape is you can also preview everything um, really quickly because it just runs inside of SketchUp so I can look at what the lighting is going to do in here I can look at a lot of different things inside my model and so maybe we'll add like a glass table in here we're just basically placing these objects as if they were furniture inside this area. So very simple to do, very easy to do. Um, i probably flip this a little bit. And so we've got kind of some furniture in here. And so the other thing I want to do for, 
um, doing this in Enscape is I need to create a plane on the outside because right now if we click on this and we were to render this um, we've got all these tables and chairs but what we don't have in the background is we don't have any kind of image or ground or anything like that so obviously our rendering doesn't look very realistic and so we need to add that background so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a ground plane because you can see as of right now we've just got this kind of like dark plane back here and we might put an HDR file in the background in a little bit but before we do that I want to add just a couple things like some tree geometry and stuff like that so to do that I'm going to rotate outside of here one thing you may think about doing when you start uh, adding objects like this for a certain rendering program is maybe putting them in a group and then taking that group and just calling it something like rendering furniture just something where you kind of keep it grouped together and it's not merging with everything else and then it gets a lot easier to kind of move things around but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fly outside of our model and we're just gonna add a big plane and so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna draw a big plane but because of the way that I've modeled this that can get a little bit problematic because you can see how a lot of the ground and everything else kind of isn't in a group so what I'm gonna do just to make this a little bit simpler is I'm just gonna take everything here and I'm just gonna drop it in a group. The other way you could do this is you could also draw a big rectangle off to the side and then put that in a group and then move it over. That way, and that may be the better way to do it, just so uh, you don't have to worry about this kind of merging with this other geometry. And if you don't make your models ground plane, um, if you don't give your models ground plane any thickness, then uh, that can be a little bit of a problem as well just because you get this Z fighting, which is two different um, surfaces trying to occupy the same space inside of SketchUp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna block out this space a little bit and I'm gonna delete this out. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle across this face and I'm just gonna delete out the stuff from the ground plane um, that kind of intersects with where this uh, model is. So you can see how basically what I did is I just cut out the stuff in that plane itself um, that was intersecting with this face. And so you just need to make sure those two faces aren't occupying the same space. And you can take this back as far as you want to, but really all we're going to do right now is we're just going to apply a grass material to it. And again, the, the nice thing about applying a grass material with Enscape is if we were to go into our landscaping, fencing, and vegetation, select something like our grass dark green, um, and then go back in and render this because that has the word grass in it when we render this if you have grass rendering turned on that's actually going to render as grass inside of Enscape so you can see how this isn't just like a flat location in here this is actually rendering grass and depending on processor speeds and things like that you may want to um, off to the side on the right hand side over here you may want to think about um, maybe not applying that grass material back here if that's not going to be in your image but really it seems to render pretty quickly at least for me and so I've got grass in here now what I want to do is I want to add some inscape trees so to add inscape trees we're just going to do the same thing with that library so we're just going to take a few trees so we're going to go back in the asset library and we're just going to find a couple trees. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and you can see how the nice thing about some of these trees is they've actually got a person down here to give you kind of an idea of the scale. And so what that means is you can come in here and you can find different trees and uh, use the scale idea or the scale in here to get an idea what those are going to look like. So probably in this case, I want to bring in maybe some uh, deciduous type trees or something like that. Um, and then you can bring in some smaller trees as well. So I'm just going to drop in a couple of these tall trees. And you see how these are actually coming in here as Enscape proxies, which is great because they're not going to slow down your model. And so those are a little bit uniform, but that's okay for right now. Let's take a look at them and see how they look. So you can see how those trees kind of render in the background. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some smaller trees and some things to kind of give me some more interest in the background.
All right, so we've got a few more plants in here and probably what we're gonna do, and I think I'm gonna break this up into a couple other videos, is we're gonna come back in a little bit later and we're gonna add an HDR file in the background just to make this look a little bit more realistic. So we might take this and maybe like make copies of it off to the side, but it's just kind of a work in progress working with it as we go. So I think I'm gonna split this video off now and then uh, we'll continue it a little bit later um, when we go through and we kind of um, start finalizing our materials and our shot and things like that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you like this style of video? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.